Lulu walks the dogs. Since a kid named Fleshman is going to hang around a whole lot in these pages, I need to tell you right away that Fleshman is not his last name, but his first name. Fleshman was his mom's last name before she married his dad and changed her name to his. It was like other moms' last names could be Anderson or Kelly before they got married. Some moms don't change their last names after they're married, but I really don't feel like discussing that right now. Anyway, stay with me here. Some of these used to be Kelly moms might decide to first name their daughters Kelly, and some Anderson moms might first name their daughters Anderson, or maybe they'd name their sons Kelly and daughters Anderson. And though not too many Fleshman moms decide to name their kids Fleshman, Fleshman's mom did. Got it? No? Well, too bad if you don't. I'm busy, and it's time to tell my story. Chapter one, Lulu. Remember Lulu? Used to always be a big pain. So she met Mr. B, a lovely brontosaurus. Now she's just a sometimes pain. And not nearly as rude as before, but unless what she wants is utterly, totally, absolutely, and no way, Jose, impossible, she's still a girl who wants what she wants when she wants it. So what is it exactly that our Lulu wants? Right now, I'm just saying it costs a lot of money. Furthermore, her mom and her dad, who give almost everything she asks for, said to her with many sighs and sorries that they couldn't afford to buy it for her and that she would have to earn that money to get it. Lulu thought about throwing one of her famous screeching, heel-kicking, arm-waving tantrums, except that since her last birthday, she wasn't doing that baby stuff anymore. So... Instead, she tried some other ways, politer, quieter, sneakier, grown upper ways of changing their minds. First try. Why are you being so cruel to me, to your only child, to your dearest, darlingest Lulu? For not being cruel, her mom explained in an I'm so sorry voice. You're still our dearing, dearest and darlingest, but we don't have the money to spend on things like that. Second try. I'll eat only one meal a day and also never go to the dentist. And then you can use all that money you saved to buy it for me. Dentists and food are much more important, Lulu's dad explained, than this thing that you want, which means, and here he sighed heavily, that if you really still want it, you're going to have to pay for it yourself. Really still want it? Of course she really still wanted it. She was always and forever going to want it. But paying for it herself, hmm, that might be utterly and totally, plus absolutely and no way Jose impossible. So she kept on trying to change their minds, making her saddest and maddest and baddest faces and giving her mom and her dad some unbeatable arguments like, I'll move down into the basement and you'll get the money by renting out my bedroom. Or you could get money by selling our car and taking the bus instead, which would also be much better for the environment. But great as her arguments were, her mom and her dad kept saying no and sighing and sorrying. And after her 16th or 17th try, Lulu was starting to feel a little discouraged. Last try. So while all the other kids are playing and laughing and having fun, I'll be the only kid my age earning money. Oh, I don't know about that, said Lulu's mom. That little fleshman down the street is always earning money by doing helpful chores for folks in the neighborhood. So young and already such a hardworking boy. Well, what do you know? Here's Fleshman and it's only chapter one. I told you he would be hanging around a lot. Chapter two. <clears throat> Lulu did not want to hear about hardworking Fleshman. She did not want to hear about nice, anything nice about Fleshman. She did not, in fact, want to hear anything about Fleshman. He was such a goody-goody, such a sweet, little kind, little helpful little boy that Lulu could almost throw up when she heard him soppily say to the lady at, down at the corner, You don't have to thank me, Mrs. King. It was an honor to hold your shopping bag. Or, You paid me too much for raking your leaves, Mr. Rossi. Take back a dollar and keep it for yourself. Ugh. And when, in addition, the neighbors would say how cute, how adorable looking Fleshman looked, 
Lulu would secretly wish that he would trip on his shoelace and knock out his front teeth. Maybe you think that Lulu shouldn't be wishing such wicked wishes. Maybe you're right. But haven't you ever met someone who all the moms and the dads in the world thought was just perfect? Someone you'd never be as perfect as? Someone who, no matter what kind of excellent stuff you did, would always do more of it and do it better? I knew a someone like that when I was a kid, and I still could almost throw up just thinking about her. But let's get back to the story. Lulu needed to make some money, and she didn't want Fleshman getting in her way. So she walked down the street to his house, where he was sitting on his front stoop playing his flute, which he did whenever he wasn't earning money or getting the highest marks ever heard of in school or being completely adorable by smiling his dear little smile and saying to practically everyone he met, have a great, I mean a really great day. And his shirt matched his pants and his pants matched his socks and his hair didn't have one single hair sticking up. Plus, next to him was a bowl with a snack, and the snack wasn't sugar clusters, but sliced carrots. Just looking at Fleshman made Lulu so annoyed. Here's the deal, Fleshman, she said with her hip, her hands on her hips, and her eyebrows scrunched together. I won't rake anyone's leaves or carry those their groceries. I won't mail a letter that someone forgot to mail, and in winter, I won't help people pour salt on their sidewalks to keep them from slipping on the ice. That's interesting, said Fleshman, carefully putting down his flute and smiling his extremely, annoyingly sweet smile. But what's your point? My point, said Lulu, not smiling back, is that I'll stay away from your jobs, but I'm warning you, Fleshman, stay away from mine. Which jobs are those? asked Fleshman, getting up from the stoop and offering Lulu a carrot. As soon as I decide, she replied, waving away the carrot, I will tell you. Lulu went home and thought and thought, and then she thought some more, trying to figure out what her job should be. But since the name of this story I'm telling is Lulu Walks the Dogs, you already know, of course, what she decided.